Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Triforce podcast in a brand new 2024. In a brand new 2024 year. This will be our second podcast of the year. A brand new 2024. Not that other 2024 that have been trying to palm off on us for years. This is a brand new one. This is not the second one of the year. Well, it's not the second one we've recorded. But it is oh. the second one we're releasing. Really? So when did we? When did, when are we putting one out there? I don't remember recording one over Christmas. We didn't. We recorded one before Christmas. Oh, clever that got us! Delayed for what reasons. What won't we think of? Us we're guys, so good. We're you know. So good. Wait, does that mean we broke the streak right at the end of the year? I think so. Yes. Uh, <sighs> yeah. Whose fault was that? I wonder. It's probably all well, of our faults, honestly. Yeah, I'll take the blame on this we'll one. We'll take the blame. We can't. We can't complain too much. Anyway, do you have a nice new year? Lots to talk about. I'm sure. Uh, Christmas and New Year. Fill me in, boys. I had a, I had a bad one, really. Was it because of your boiler? Though it was that uh, and the internet. I, I couldn't stream for like nearly two weeks because Virgin Media are so fucking useless. Uh, yeah. And um, what else? Oh, and I had a terrible cold the last week as well. So. It... <laughs> oh man. What were you doing? Well, sneezing, coughing. What You're just saying? playing games and not streaming them. Yeah, I mean, so I, I, uh, there was a wipe, Tarkov wipe on the 27th. I don't want to get into a gaming chat in our first podcast of the year, but <clears throat> when the wipe comes out, you want to kind of get in there and get going and yeah, level up and everything. Otherwise, you get left behind. So I was like, cool, I'll play some Tarkov. And I was DCing like three, four times a raid. I was lagging. If I was on Discord, it would lag out. Uh, oh. I couldn't stream at all. I did stream. I think I streamed for like two hours on one of the days when it was bad and the vod was 15 parts because the Jeez. stream kept restarting and stopping restarting and stopping oh that's so annoying yeah and i got really sick of people listen it, let's say you're trying to be helpful which is the, the 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 pleasant way of putting the kind of help i was getting people trying to be helpful yes but by stating like, the obvious exactly it's like yeah. you're, you're attempting to be helpful without putting any effort into being helpful when you just go have you thought about trying another ISP? That to me, and I raged about this a lot on stream, when people turn up and if you start a sentence with, you've probably already been asked this, but stop typing and delete what you were going to say. Yeah, because you have, you have been asked that yes. already a million and, times. And yeah. also, I do this for a living. This is my livelihood pretty much is dependent on streaming one way or another. Do you honestly think in your heart of hearts, that I am so fucking dense that there are all these much better ISPs well, just sat there. Well, now that you there. mention it. Well, obviously. <laughs> I just joke. <laughs> but it's just like, come on, put some fucking, you can't tell me you're trying to be helpful when you're actually insulting me. Uh, in my yeah, opinion, that's yeah. insulting. It yeah. would be like walking up to someone whose car is stuck and going, have you tried putting the key in and turning it? Or even worse, you try to get a different car? Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> it's yes. not helpful you can yes. say i'm just trying to be helpful but think about what you're saying and if you're actually trying to be helpful be helpful don't just state the obvious like i said if you're going to open with you've probably heard this but stop stop typing delete try something else so 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 that sounds awful um ah, well, it, it was bad but wait, wait wait the boiler you haven't heard the best part oh let's hear it the day before i'm gonna go p- pick up uh big mama flax from from Bournemouth and bring her up for Christmas, which is like a thing we do every year. God help yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the boiler stops working. It's making awful noises. What was the problem with it in the end? So uh, we had. I, a I don't want to skip the story. I no, just, no, no, but no. I, I am interested leak. in boilers. We had a leak. Right. A leak. Yeah. So we looked at the pressure. The pressure so the, on the boiler so the had always been. the pressure just been... fucking dropped right out. Oh yeah, but I yeah. mean it was like zero, <laughs> right? Yeah. So well, we yeah, it would be a... if they've got a leak in the pipes. That's that. That shit's going right down to zero. They're, well, they're, you'll lose so all the pressure. We had two leaks, brother. <laughs> oh <laughs> my god! Well, fucking <laughs> one of that, them double fuck. Right. No one pressure. of them was like a pinhole leak that yes. you could barely notice. So that right. over time the pressure would drop, and I thought to myself. It's got to be some. I I know which part of the house it's probably going to be. I'm just going to say this, and Flax, I'm sure you can agree with me when I do say this. Uh, a, a word of warning to anybody who has a boiler at home: if you got to, if you've got to top up the pressure on your boiler, you have a leak. You, you have it, you a have leak. to find a leak. Like, yeah. and they have instrumentation now to help you find a leak like they through do. the walls they like x-ray machines and shit yeah. like they 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 can do it so well, we got don't the hesitate out. don't be don't yeah. don't get caught out because it sucks when your boiler isn't uh, working it's going to be something like one of the pipes leading to the radiators yeah. is leaking especially if you have a wet system for your central heating as well right. that yeah that's that's a rough one too so we like, we had that the pressure was gone but it previously had just dropped slowly and i thought there's a leak probably in the underfloor heating under the tiles oh, in the kitchen i'm not going to fucking take all those fuck. up to find 
find yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. So this plumber comes and he fills up the system, and the water when he turns it on, the water just drops out like straight away. Yeah. So I was like, all right, but this is new. This hasn't been happening for a long time. This is brand new. So the boiler's got no pressure. So because I I thought he could have just isolated it, so we just had hot water, and he isolated the hot water from the central heating, but he didn't do that, or he couldn't do that. I'm not sure which. When so uh, essentially we were left with no hot water and no heating over the Christmas period with my he, mom up. When he turned up and started working on this stuff, did you have a couple of suggestions for him? As in, <laughs> have you tried uh, maybe calling another plumber? <laughs> right, uh, yeah. I know you've probably heard this before, but do you think there's a leak? Like, yeah. you, did you tried ask him a couple that. of questions? Yeah, oddly enough, he reacted negatively. Isn't it crazy? <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. But so it eventually I got a week later was that because it was over Christmas. The next appointment I could get was after Christmas. Luckily, a neighbor of ours was away. We used their shower every day. No problemo. Um, but this guy turned up really quiet guy, Darren, right, which is a good plumber's name. Yeah. And he could find leaks. He plugs a hose into the radiator nearest the front door has this machine outside yeah. like that. And he push, pushes air into the system. And that pushes all the water out of the system out. But it also means that if you listen closely, he had a stethoscope. Yeah, you, you can, can hear, hear a whistle. Where the air, right. Yeah. I could hear <laughs> from behind the fridge. I was like, uh, Darren? He was like, yeah. I said, like, I think I've got it. He comes in, he's like, oh yeah, that's it. So behind the fridge, in the wall, the pipe coming down from the boiler that goes to the downstairs area, something had come loose. So he smashes open the wall with a hammer, clobbers some of the floor up with a hammer, and there it is. And this pipe, there's just water like foaming out of this pipe. So he fixes that, and I said to him, there is also the chance of a pinhole leak. And while everything was there, I spotted this dripping. He was like, oh yeah, yeah, I'll fix that. I fix that, and now, no problem, and the, the heating is, is good and everything. But it was just like, right then, now the fridge is out from the wall because there's no floor behind it and everything, so uh, it was just a bit of a hassle. And then immediately after Darren's left, I get a call. Caught it from my youngest. I was sick as a dog oh, for a week. That felt sucks. terrible. Yeah, can we, just, can we have a year. big shout out to the Darrens of the world, though? Because I feel you, like you turn up and you fucking do the job right. You figure out the problem and you fix it. God yeah. bless you. Because there's a lot of people who don't. And he, he accepted I'm a sure cup of you've tea. Had, uh, I'm sure you've had people come over and give you the fucking runaround because they don't want to do any work. So they're, you know... Yeah. They're 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 doing voodoo magic on uh, on dials and stuff like that, oh, he was and great. you just think you are so useless. I could have done all of this stuff. I just need somebody who can actually fix the problem. Please just fix it. Get yeah. a Darren in. You need a Darren in your life. Yeah. God bless you, Darren. Yeah. Anyway, how was yours? Mine you was a, mine was mine was all right. It was it was pretty standard, you know. Um, we were all sick. Well, I say we. I was not sick. Everybody was sick leading up to Christmas, though. My kids were sick the day before Christmas Eve, puking and everything. It was mm. pretty bad. Uh, sorry, the two, my two eldest. So they were in bed all day, feeling better on Christmas Eve. But my wife was sick all Christmas Eve. Couldn't get oh, out man. of bed. Was on the verge of puking. Probably so I thought, COVID, no? I don't know. I don't think so, but maybe. And um, so we just figured, oh, well, Christmas is probably a bit of a write-off. Like, I mean, we, the kids had, like, you know, presents and stuff like that, but we just thought it's going to be pretty, you know, low-key. But then uh, everybody just felt fine on Christmas Day, so we just went ahead with uh, everything as usual. And um, yeah, it was it was it was all right. It's, I mean, busy. It's like you know, it's a it's it's a very stressful, busy time of year. Mm. Uh, it's a lot of pressure to do a lot of stuff. But um, yeah, it was fine. It was fine. Everybody had a good time. Everybody's back to school now. I took all the Christmas decoration down yesterday, so that's all done. I'm I'm happy that it's done. And um, we've had like three storms and no flooding, so yeah. that's good too. And I also got some uh, I I got some flood gear. You want to hear about this stuff? Yes. Holy shit, man! I got these like these. It's a snake. It's filled with gel, and it absorbs like fucking gallons of water. You so you the the idea is that as it gets wet it turns into a barricade mm. uh, and then it, it, it's, it's not really meant to hold a ton of water back, but more redirect water. Right. Yeah. So and also gonna, give you time to get shit out of the way. That's that right. Get, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to snake this thing when, uh, when I know that there's some rain coming, I'm going to snake this thing on my driveway because, uh, <laughs> The big problem is where the garage is. It's a little bit lower. <laughs> right. So it flows so, down. So it's going to flow down off the driveway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to redirect the water off the driveway into the road. 
Uh, Have you thought about getting a new driveway? Well, I mean, it's... it's <laughs> I saw the Twitch comments. I, actually, I, have, I have thought about it, but it is not as easy as uh, as it sounds to just get a new, simply get a new driveway. You know? Right. Um, I'm, I'm going to keep asking this until people understand why it's yeah, a stupid no, it, fucking it, thing to it say. Is, I'm just going to say. But listen, there's more. There's the snake. And then there's the cubes as well. So I got cubes for the in front of the door of the garage. Well, like Esco barriers, like those ones they have in military bases. Sandless sandbags, baby. Oh, that's I know, just the bag, isn't it? They're just filled with this gel shit again that just absorbs a ton of water. Is, but that, then, the, is that the gel shit they put in nappies? I, it must be, yeah, because it's, that shit it's a will similar like technology. Oh, I know, it's insane. Yeah, yeah, they're like little beads. And I know this because uh, at one point, one of our kids, uh, the nappy was left far too long and it just could not absorb any more piss. And there was just like little balls of piss gel like all over the place. Yeah, like they I've been started there. spilling out of the nappy. It was really disgusting. But anyway, similar technology. It's like cubes. They look like sandbags. And as they absorb tons of water, they get bigger and bigger and bigger and then form like a, a barricade. So I feel like those two things, I should be good. But it's just knowing when the rain is coming, you know, mm. because uh, we were forecasted like heavy downpours yesterday. There was no heavy downpours yesterday. Like I was watching all the time and there was like a little drizzle here and there, quite a bit of wind, but no heavy downpour. So, I mean, I, I, I'm as I'm as ready as I can be, but like I need I need the forecasting to be spot on, you know, so I can deploy. So how do you unfill it. You I throw think it away. Just, I think you no. They're reusable. These ones are re reusable. So I think they, they, they just, just dry out. dehydrate over time. I think maybe? so. Yeah. I think you could just leave them really? in the sun, hmm. and then they'll uh, just go back to. Yeah. You can use them a couple of times. Apparently. So. Mm. Yeah. Mm. There you go, Lewis. What else have you got? There you go. Well, I mean, uh, okay. They they don't sound environmentally friendly. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'm I'm sure they're probably not. But I mean, what is really these days? You know what I mean? Like, come on. I mean, uh, there's the, every everything everything that we use has some sort of impact, right? Like this is true. Um, you know what I was? That's how I, was, I that's uh, how I comfort myself and sleep well at night every night with arguments uh, like that. You so. can look up. Is it called Sky Tracker? Sky, Sky Tracker. Tracker. The Sky one, Tracker. the airplane Sky, one. Sky Scanner. Yeah. Yeah. That is. It is insane. Like okay. if you if you look up how many planes are over. Do you want to like hear London something right now. even it's more insane? Flight radar, flight radar. So I look at this. Yeah. Just go to, go to flightradar24.com right now. Right. Zoom out so you can see the whole of Europe and just look how many planes are in the sky right now. Yeah. Okay. I am. Um, yes, I can see there's quite a few planes. There's like. A thousand minimum. Yeah, there's lots. So I noticed that there's not too many. Until we do something about that. There's not I too think... many planes over Russia right now. There's like <laughs> maybe five. Uh, I wonder if. Uh, yeah, that is actually interesting. I was going to say maybe they can't track them, but there is one. The a AI flight AIC 111 from Delhi to London flying right over Russia. Yeah. There's, uh, not, there's, 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 not there's a none lot flying over, over Ukraine. There's, none. there's no. really not a lot over Africa either. Surprisingly, I mean that there's you'd expect a, a couple more. I think Although, they're going. They're either going to South Africa or Nigeria. There's a lot of light aircraft down here, though. This one's going from Joburg to Luanda. In, check uh, check out Luanda. Check out uh, Namibia and right Gola. now. There's like a million little light aircraft. Oh, look at that! There's yeah. like a mess. I know. It's like a, it looks like a little planes. swarm of little little tiny planes. What are they doing? Interesting, eh? That is. Oh, these are just little gliders. Oh, they're gliders. Look, click on them. And they're all gliders. I wonder if there must be some. There must be a mountain range. This is or some tourist around. shit, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's got to be. Like right? this is like, come and see the savannah. LKN one four one A probably just had a great view of all these gliders. Oh my god! It just yeah. flew over them. Holy shit! Wow. If you look out of your left hand window, you'll be able to see the gliders of <laughs> Namibia. Quite clearly down there, flying over the uh, the plains of Namibia. That is uh, <laughs> that is beautiful, very beautiful. And uh, Botswana also has the same thing, but uh, not as much as Namibia. You had to hit the windhook. Windhook, and uh, you can fly out of windhook. You get great views of the uh, Nakluf Mountain Zebra Park and the Savannah. You'll love it. It's bloody good. Oh, Diplomatic right. community. Sorry, it's instinctive. It's well, instinctive. Of course, if you look at Flight Tracker 24, it's all a hoax because uh, I've heard a, a conspiracy theory recently. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have heard about this one that planes don't exist. If you see a plane in the sky, it's a hologram. They don't actually Wait, exist. I haven't heard this And if one. you've ever been on a flight before, it was all simulated. 
because they don't wow. exist. Flying has not actually been invented. This is uh this apparently is a is is a theory that people is this like a Truman Show type situation? It feels is like this... it is. Yeah, yeah. Something. It's something like that. Yeah. Um. I'd never. I'd never heard about this uh, theory before. But somebody in in chat was saying the other day that apparently it's a thing. And then when we were talking about it, loads of people piped up saying, "Yeah, it's a thing." There's people that. So I, I've truly heard the whole this. birds aren't real thing, where they think they're all CIA robots or something like right. that. Right. Which is like, I think that's kind of a meme. But there are people who believe it. Um. But I haven't heard the planes aren't real. So no, what do they I say never... to people who've been? on a plane well i think it's uh, it we had this discussion after and it's the age old um you know if you say they say planes don't exist and you say well yeah they do and then they then they just hit you with well can you prove it and, yes and uh but you can't though well i mean i suppose you can you but you have to drive to like somewhere where there is a plane uh and i guess watch it watch it take off it'd be yes. pretty easy to prove yeah, yeah, I, but I then, can prove it. But I then, live in the flight path. I've been on planes many times. But then their I argument is that all of these these so called planes that are flying are holograms. So you'd only be to them. You'd just be watching a really good hologram. Right. So what off. about the ones that I've been on? Well, that again, they they think that it's simulated and that you're somehow teleported or or something. There's so some, when I get on the plane, there's some fantastical magic that takes place and can look out the window. Yes, and see like, the. Yeah, it's basically, it's, a, it's a hologram. It's like Microsoft Flight Simulator. Yeah, you're just like you know. You some, know what would be easier? You're in Star Tours at Disneyland. Plane. I think it would be easier to make a plane. It would. It certainly would be a lot easier. Yeah, but I mean, the, not not to people who believe this that they it that's can't, incredible. It I'm gonna have to look exist. into this. Yeah, planes yeah. are real. Oh, please don't fuck my recommendations. <laughs> you're now. You're now a conspiracy theorist. Welcome to the team. Yeah. Before I get sucked into this, so don't worry. You I'm, can't. I'm going to avoid it. It's Flax has already lost. He's completely. He's down the rabbit so... hole. <laughs> it's too stupid. No, it's just I've given up. There's no. There's no point. <laughs> it's just really like, is not. It's like just going. Oh, really? No. It's like an artist you don't care about has released a new album. That's what it feels like at this point. Yes. Like I was into their early stuff. It was fascinating. Yeah. Mind mind bending and annoying. But now it's like. It's like if you told me Wigfield had released a new album. I'd be like, I remember Saturday Night, hated that. Uh, and now you tell me she's on her 15th album and it's Planes Don't Exist. I I'm beyond it. I don't care. I feel like sometimes I feel like, oh, I'd love to meet these people. And but then I realize, you know, I think I already have met some of yeah, these people. Yeah, you have. Guaranteed. And I actually think maybe some of them might have at one point been in my family as well. You know, like yeah. extended <laughs> family, like a uncle. Everybody's or everybody's you know lost I mean? friends to this shit. I, I mean, I had a good mate of mine was a 9-11. Uh, denier, um, thought it was an inside job, had all this quote-unquote evidence, had done his research, all this shit. Uh, what are you going to do? You just talk about something else. I mean, we've had, I've, we've had emails to the, to the post bag about this. Yeah. People being like, oh, my dad's a nut, what do I do? And I was like, eh, try to find something you guys can do where you don't talk about this shit. Yeah, yeah. Fuck, fuck, talk, talk about, like, fucking, I don't know, something you've watched, like, I don't know, Inspector Morse, or I don't know, <laughs> fucking yeah. what we do in the shadows. Talk about Inspector Morse. Yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> One of those current TV shows. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I tried to think of an old <laughs> TV show. <laughs> Midsummer Murders would be the one I think dads he's trying to think of. He's trying to think of an old classic, this guy. He's trying to... Yeah. He's trying to think of an old family classic that you can enjoy yeah. with your with your old man. Oh, did you so, see? Yeah. Speaking of uh, detective shows, David Suchet, I thought as Poirot was excellent. David Suchet, um, yeah, my my little my, uh, my I'm a little Belgian man. So, <laughs> so mysteries, Hastings. I think it is probably the butler, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Did you see Lids met him? I know, yeah, yeah, she sent me a text immediately after meeting him. <laughs> How did she where'd meet she him? Where'd she meet him? Yeah, where'd she meet him? Well, he was a dude panto, I think. Oh. And Lids is a Jersey big fan show. of Poirot. We both are. I love Poirot. One of the best TV detectives ever. Well, Way better what, than that cunt yeah, on he, Midsummer. He is great. He is end. great. What? I mean, uh, Jeff Bergerac. Bergerac, Bergerac I liked. Midsummer, I do not like. What? What's not to like about it? It's got like Bergerac it. in it. He moves too slowly. Fucking get a wiggle on, son. He's just... He's 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 put on a bit of timber, and now he's just sort of like sashaying his way around the set, barely doing anything. And he just turns up, and what they're all in this one fucking town. Poirot is a jet-setting genius. He's all over the place solving crimes. The guy in midst of what is it, Barnaby? Is that his name? So fucking bone idle. Yeah. He's just stays. He's like, oh, I don't want any traveling. Just film the series all in one one place. I'll do the show. 
but you can't leave this town. What is it, Tame? I think it's called. My dad went there with his with his wife. They went on holiday there. You gotta have the highest love the show murder so rate much. in the country. Yeah, like, it's uh, ludicrous. It's like it's like like the, like the Baltimore of England. Like it's <laughs> the fucking yeah. bodies dropping left, right, and center. Yeah, crazy. But I, it's just like why are they why do they never leave Midsummer? Like come on. Well, we also remember Poirot is written by you know Agatha Christie. It's right. It's 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 it's, it's, it's a classic, you know, whereas Midsummer Murders is written by television writers. <laughs> yeah, I scum. Don't, I don't scum. really have any appreciation for literature. I'm I'm fucking stupid as hell. I, I just watch a lot of TV, and uh, you know, like some of it's pretty good, and then some of it's pretty bad too. Uh, I've been watching The Traitors. Have you seen that? Yeah, my my uh, my wife and my youngest love love Traitors. Yeah, it's um, good. It, 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 having played a lot of mafia, it's just like watching people yeah, who don't know it's how like to play it, mafia play yeah, mafia. Yeah, it is. The first season was really tough to watch a lot of the time. It was still, it was still good. It was, it, it, it was, it's a neat uh, format and stuff. But the um, the first season, the U, this is the UK edition. The first season had about three thousand people sign up to be on it. Wow! Um, and then season two just started the other day. And it had 130,000 people sign up to be on it after well, watching it the first season and yeah. getting some idea of how to play the game or whatever. But the first season, the people are fucking so useless. Yeah, they it's were insane. bad. insane. Like, they just, like, they're not even trying to play the game. Like, they, they're just like, oh, you voted for me? I'm voting for you. Like, that's it. The, the whole right. season is basically that. Like, or you, it's like, you oh, know, you didn't uh, react the way I thought you would to somebody getting evicted. Oh, you must be a traitor. That's it. <laughs> it's like do, the do you whole know season. what got me about season one? And I actually rage quit the show, as in I will, I will not watch it again. Yeah. There was a guy that they had made a traitor yeah. right near the end. Yes. And then when he got voted out, he was like, yeah, I'm going, but uh, someone is also a traitor. You know, you should have a good look at some of the other people uh, on the same. It's a, basically, it's a fun, I mean, at the same, what are like, you doing? You don't do that. It and fucking the sucks so bad. Sorry, sorry for the spoilers if you've not seen season one, but the end of season one is probably the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. It's awful. It was, I, I it genuinely was so think fucking unfair to the. But given that there's money at stake, I, I yeah. honestly think it's one of the biggest miscarriages of justice in game show history. It has in the to UK. be. It was. It was. But they, they, you know, they came back and said, "Oh, he didn't cheat." And I was like, "Yeah, I suppose." not but like they can't call him out on it at the time because it would just ruin the whole show you know what i mean they like, should they should they can't they just... should have stepped in and said to the guy don't worry we realize the game is fucked you're still going to get paid because we can't have that yeah well, like that, it, it, that's what they should have done he, and honestly the, i think legally, played the, that, the, that's bullshit will played a fucking blinder as well like it, it, he had it he had it <laughs> i don't know if it was intentional but he had it to the point where he had the three most idiotic people out of the oh. group left who Perfect. would never have figured it out in a million years. Like, the only way that they're figuring it out is if somebody literally said, it's him. <laughs> right. And that's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> like that's, it was really They would never awful. have figured it out. They just could, they didn't have the capacity between the three of them to ever solve it. So I, and, I watched uh, uh, I watched the first episode of the second season last night, or yeah. the night before, as I'm sure you did. Yeah. Let me tell you something. If I was a traitor, that lad with what has he got? He's got one leg or or something like that. No, no, that, that he's not a he's not a traitor. No, he's... no, no, no. But there's a guy on it with one leg, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Are you talking about season two now? Yeah, no, season, yeah, season two, two. Yeah, yeah. I, I, just I am killing the... that lad night one. Right? Well, you're the, the the ex military who survived the uh, the improvised explosion. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like, well, imagine you're all in a room. What do you do? <laughs> oh, I work as I work on a checkout. I work on a checkout. What do you do? Oh, I sell makeup. I'm a reseller for makeup, basically an Avon lady. Ha ha. What do you do? Oh, I'm a mechanic. What do you do? I'm a decorated veteran who lost his leg in a war, and I'm a really good lad. All right, you're a dead man. I'm getting rid of <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Because you yeah, can't have are, that kind of stick shit washing people, around. There are people who are just naturally quite threatening, but yeah. <laughs> He seems like because everyone's uh, going to listen to him. No one's going to doubt him. No, he, I know. and no one's going to want to vote him off. He can't vote him off. He's got one leg. Oh, I would. I would. Bam. He's out. Murdered. Yeah. Night one. Did you see? Hey. Did you see our version? Our version. What do you mean our version? The, well, the, the Oxcast the version. Cast version. Oh yes. No, I, I didn't I watch did. it. I was almost. I was going to be on that, but I, I was ill in the end, so I couldn't come down. Well, Very, that's a shame. Yeah. I think that's that's. That's uh, that's a, that's a shame. Well, I don't know if we're going to do another one. It was certainly, it was certainly a learning experience, and right. I imagine that's very similar with this as well. It's a relatively new format. They don't really have good 
um, good good idea of the rules and what to do to encourage behaviors. Yeah, and, the first you know. I think the first season of anything is a bit like that. Where, where the UK Survivor was a little bit different because I think all the people that were on it had seen Survivor because Survivor's just been around for a long time, right? So they 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 were aware of how it all worked and what the rules were and uh, and 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 sort of how to game it at the the various transitional points in in the game of survivor right but with the with the traders you had none of that like the the people were so clueless so it was it was crazy to see it whittle down to about five people and they the the they still had no concept of who it could be. Like, you know, a lot of them would just turn up to the meeting every day and be like, oh, I have no idea. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> well, well, of course, though. But, 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 and a lot of them just kind of treated it like it was like an 18 to 30s vacation. You know, like they weren't actually playing the game. It was just like, oh, well, of course they're not. Two weeks In off, the first cool. season of anything, yeah. you know, you get you get recruited to do the trait of season one. No one's ever heard of it before. Right. You just, you don't, you don't know what the fuck it is. You can't see it. You can't watch it. Whereas everyone on series two has watched season one. Yes. Right. Because right. yeah. as soon as you got on, you're like, first of all, you wouldn't even apply without seeing it, probably. But as soon as you got on, you'd be like, oh, I better watch this before yeah. I go on. Right. So again, everyone's going in with a completely different mindset. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be completely different as a result. Yeah. But also, yeah, you have got people trying to game it, trying to play it up, trying to do the stupid thing. But I, I, I want it to get to that point because I want to see that. I want to see people who understand the game and are there to play the game. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think that's the, more interesting than just watching. The Traitors is something we've been doing for years and years in, in Mafia, in TTT, in longer form, in slower form, you know, Blood and the Clock Tower, all of these types of games we've played extensively. Mm. And so we we have this kind of much deeper knowledge to, to what it's like to play these yeah, games. Yeah. And this is just a version that takes place over a fucking week or more instead of, you know, f f the best part of an hour, you know, max. Yeah, you, yeah. You know, like, uh, we, we, you know, we do it in micro. You know, these guys are doing it in super slow-mo. And as a result, you can't have tasks in there that could too easily give away the traitors, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. otherwise they're gone. Like they, they have to be undercover for so fucking long. Yeah. That if you give them, I'm sure they've done test games and things like this because they must have done where they put in tasks where it was actually like you know easy to sabotage. But as soon as, as soon as they fucking found out who they were, it was like oh bam. Well, you're in out. the like, in the traders, the uh, the tasks are all just to fill the prize pot. So the prize pot starts at zero, and the tasks are like. Uh, group endeavors to fill the prize pot with money so there's not really yeah, yeah. there's not really any scope to finding out who is a trader like during any of the tasks or whatever they exist solely to to just uh, build camaraderie with the with the contestants um, yeah. so that it makes it more difficult for them to vote out traders. And the idea is much. that whoever's, you know, the idea though is that whoever's working least hard on the task is some sort of traitor. Right? No, no, because the traitor, if the traitor is still alive at the end of the game, they win the money. So oh, it's right. in everybody's interest to fill the prize pot. Um, so there's and, no point. And whittle things down. Like the, the tasks are just... I don't know. Like they, it, it's it's a it's an interesting idea, so but it's so it's kind of no like to filler. find. There's no way to find the trade. No, not through the tasks. No, no. But then your your day to day interactions and your the politicking that goes on outside of the tasks is where you might find out who the trader is. And then every every day there's a round table meeting where somebody gets banished. So there's no immunity from that I'm just, either. I'm just wondering how they're supposed to find the traitor. Well, I mean... In, in, in the same way in Mafia, if you've ever played Mafia... Um, after a while, you can you can figure out probably who the traitor is based on who they're voting for and stuff. But like in season one, nobody seemed to remember who anybody ever voted for. Like the guy who was poised to win as a traitor in season one was instrumental in in getting two other traders out and nobody yeah. ever touched on that like every nobody ever like cast their mind back to say oh yeah no he was the guy who basically started the witch hunt against a trader that we got out and then did like uh had the casting deciding vote on another trader that went out so like he could have just turned around easily and said i'm not a trader i voted two of them out like what are you talking about but it, it never came up. Like it just. Oh, I see. It ne I was see. never I mean, mentioned it was, by anybody. It's a classic mafia play. If you think, like, essentially, you can't trust anyone in mafia, right? And this is just a jazzed up version of mafia. If you have the guts to vote your 
<clears throat> fellow traitors out, especially when you have confirmation, as you did in the traitors. But I th in Mafia, you don't have confirmation. No, no. But I mean, other like than you lose kill power. But even then, smart Mafia will pretend that you've got rid of one of them yeah. by killing only one person. Like it's all kinds of mind games. Yeah, he played it brilliantly. He did. So that's why yeah. it was so annoying when that guy just goes, "Oh, he don't forget him on his way out." Fuck off. Yeah, he's like, "Oh, this is this is my up. this you is my parting game. shot," and everybody's like, awful. "What? What does he mean? Why is he being so creepy?" Dick. What does a parting shot even mean? And then they voted him out. <laughs> they like, they all voted him out because they couldn't risk. Yeah, basically, they 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 had no idea that it was him the whole game, the whole time. And then at, right at the end, when this guy basically announces that, oh, this guy's a traitor, and I'm pissed off because he backstabbed me. Yeah, um, they all voted him out and won. I see. Yeah, I, again, like it's complicated. And yeah, what he did our version, it was really cool. Um, I want to talk to you about something, actually, Lulu. Go All for right? it. Because I, I know that we've done we've done uh, task box. We've done traitors. We did. We did something else as well. We used what to do all in... those little card games too. Remember, like Snake Oil and um, what was the other one? Um... Yes, the fun employees. Fun, fun employee, yeah. yeah, those are fun too. Yeah, right. We've got all yeah. these people. I'm saying, and I've I've, I've mentioned this before, but it got poo pooed. I'm saying that poo we should do poo pooed a yogs soap opera slash drama. Oh my god, I've not heard this suggestion. So I thought we could basically do like an EastEnders style thing. Yeah, where you have. Once a week, an episode goes out, and we basically script like drama around the office and other locations. So we'd have the pub, you know, like they do in EastEnders. You'd have the office. There'd be a, a couple of other locations, and we'd just have as people come down to the office to visit. It's like, oh, it's my long lost cousin has turned up. It's ridiculous. The storylines are like classic soap opera, absolute gibberish. I just thought it would be funny. You write somebody, it, we'll do somebody it. needs to be <laughs> a serial killer. Can I of course nominate, there's a secret serial killer. Can I nominate myself as the DVD guy? So anytime anybody's upset about anything, I just kind of swan in and say, don't worry, <laughs> love. Let's go get a bottle of wine and a DVD, and then it'll make it all better. I want to be that guy. I, d I don't well, want to have any drama. I just want to be like the mediator, the DVD man. You, ha you need a serial killer as well. I know a lot of these soaps take place in like small towns, but every one of them has had multiple serial killers come through. Like, it's so. like Midsummer meets EastEnders. It is, yeah. Yes. But the, the problem is, uh, Sips, you're so rarely in Bristol. Yeah. Uh, well, I can, can be the really DVD. comfort them once a season. That's okay, but I can also be the killer as well. And I could like, you know, slink off and come back. You know, and then people will will start to realize. Oh, hang on, this guy. He's so. Back. When was the last? I haven't time you seen him for months. I think it was back four now, years, and he's probably thirsty <laughs> to kill again. It's been four years since he last struck. It must be a serial killer. Yeah, no one's gonna make that leap. He's just laying low. You know, he's just laying low until his next. You've got to be kill. the distant billionaire that uh, we call when we, you know, they're going to close down the old vet. Yeah. Get get on the blower to sips. And he's like, I could move some money around and keep you guys afloat, but, and there's like a catch. Yeah. That kind of thing. You turn but up I, when it's raining. Somebody's having a really heated discussion in the, in, and it's raining outside. And right. then the door opens and then I'm just standing in the door. All right. Like, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, perfect. Okay, yeah, I'm down. I'm, I'm in. Yeah, count me in. Funny. Yeah, I think it'd be. I reckon funny. you could add some like traitor style drama to it though, as well. It could even be like a fictionalized version. Yeah, of the traitors. Yeah, of you course. know, like a. But it's all with, it's with, all like, set all around the out drama. It's all set around the Yorks. I want a lot of my scenes to be me talking to somebody, and then uh, like an immediately cut scene. And then me and that person are laying in bed with sheets right up to like our necks, like laying side <laughs> by side. I think that'd be funny too. I love that in soaps, you know, like they'll just be talking and then all of a sudden it'll just cut to the next scene and they just, they just finished banging. <laughs> like they're just in bed talking. Let's watch a DVD. <laughs> it's time, time to put on a DVD. <laughs> new year, new advert. Going online without ExpressVPN it's like changing while leaving your window wide open. Oh, you might not have that. anything to hide, but why give random creeps a chance to invade <laughs> your privacy? Oh, there's bloody creeps. I welcome the creeps <laughs> to, to have a gander, honestly. Right, but you might want to conceal what you've got dangling out there. We're not all the uh, exhibitionists that you are, especially when it comes to our online data. Lewis, am I correct? Exactly. Uh, if you go online without a VPN, they can take pictures of you, Sips, and sell them on the internet. Uh, <laughs> Again, so I mean, that's, if that floats your boat. Uh, 
No, you might not want that out there. So um, when you do use ExpressVPN, people can't look in. They can't see your online activity. Your identity is anonymized through a secure VPN server and encrypted for maximum protection. It's very easy to use. You can use it on phones, laptops, routers, and anyone who shares your Wi-Fi could be protected. I use ExpressVPN when I'm at home. And so please secure your online activity today by visiting expressvpn.com slash triforce today. All right. E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com. Expressvpn.com slash triforce. You get three months for free. Do it. Go and protect yourself, Sips. Sign up. Sign up today. I will. And no one will have to see your... your dingle dangle. Dingle uh, dangle at this online. jingle jangle time of year. Yeah. Amazing. Thank God. Thank you, everyone. On with the show. So I went to um, Edinburgh for New Year. I used to go away. Wow. Um, over what the were you holiday. doing there? Uh, well, we, me and Spiff and um, Mango and RT rented a little house Ooh, and just hung out there nice. for a while. Um, we played some board games, played some Magic the Gathering. We walked around, went to Edinburgh. It was really, really chill. Nice. Um, a nice little retreat for nerds would you recommend uh, uh visiting edinburgh as like a nice place to visit for a family with uh three small children i i don't see why not it's it's quite nice quite so obviously it's a big city yeah you know it's the capital of scotland but it's kind of doesn't feel like it you know it's got it, it does feel big in places but it doesn't feel big in others it's weird yeah. does it really feel like you're in scotland like um, big time no not really, no. Even the Edinburgh accent's not very strong, you know. Right. You, you do hear a few, and a lot of Scottish accents, obviously, but not. It's not not that. It's not that overwhelming, right? You know. Um, it's nice. We walked around the city centre, which had sort of the Christmas market going on. Which How was, was it? Bit, well, it was a bit Santa's grotto, mm. except emphasis on the grot. Oh. Um, you know, kind of a just. It wasn't <laughs> wasn't the best, right? Uh, because it was all a bit damp and old, and it's mm. sort of been going for a bit too long. Um, uh, uh, the place is nice, though. It's very pretty. Lots of lots of nice places to walk around and look at. You know, we just next to where we were staying was this old ruins of an abbey from about f you know fifteen hundred, and they've got these nice signs saying, "Oh, you know, the monks used to walk along this route, this sort of footpath." You know, and and I don't know. It's just very. Very nice. It's all very nice. Lots of countryside that actually is quite pretty and clearly been lived in for hundreds of years and someone's taken care of it in some way. Right. So yeah, I had a really nice time, even though obviously freezing cold and gets gets dark at 4pm, you know, don't love that no. <laughs> vibe generally. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's, um, I think next year I'm going somewhere hot instead. Yeah, where mm. are you thinking? Bolivia. <laughs> Venezuela, yeah. Nice. Anywhere n n not north of Bristol, right. <laughs> I think. Unless I'm going to go skiing, which is a different um, vibe, you know, which I, I'm not sure I'm, I'm looking forward to. But yeah, um, it was nice to get away. And, and then obviously in the last few days of the holiday, you start thinking, oh God, I'm coming back. And then it's like you start, all the, all, everyone gets back to work in the new year and they start emailing did you, you things Did to you do. travel there by train? Got, the, got an airplane from oh, Bristol to Edinburgh. Good, good yeah. shout, good shout. Mm. Did you feel like you were in a simulator the whole time? or Didn't, didn't notice that. Did you look out the window and, and did it seem real? It's, um, it did. It's just a short hop. It's fine. Although, you know, there's always the old, there's always the old scare stuff that happens on a plane, you know, yeah. a lot of, when there's suddenly a lot of turbulence, you're like, Jesus, what's going on here? Yeah, yeah, you feel like um, your whole, you all your insides kind of like jump up, you know, like... And turn into jelly. And you feel yeah. like, yeah. It makes your heart like jump, doesn't it? Because yeah, it lifts you up. Yeah. It's a bit of a, a fright. Is, but... is that your organs not moving at the same speed as the rest of you? Well, you're not you're really you're feeling. not really moving while you're up there, so it must be they must spray some like gas or something into the cabin to make you feel like <laughs> that. Some, some, right. like uh, it's probably some nerve. It's probably like just like a like a one little like s like spritz of nerve toxin or something like, like that. I, like I know that my organs aren't just hanging like Christmas tree decorations inside my body, but they're not like no, they're specifically <laughs> mine are all hanging out of my ass. <laughs> <laughs> But like uh, when you when you uh, when the t when the plane suddenly drops and you feel it, that feeling of your stomach going up, it, is that your organs sloshing about a little bit inside you? Email us in because we do mailbag episodes. I'd love to know. Yeah, I yeah. know there's some movement 
your organs do jiggle a bit. We're in interested there. They're not in, like the, in the strap down. Yeah, we're interested in in the effects on the human body of sudden changes in uh, altitude and pressure. And I guess yeah. there's like some G forces at play there too. Maybe must be. Yeah, because yeah. I know your your brain is in a fluid in your skull, right? Like yeah. it's not it's not touching your skull. There's like a fluid around it and like membranes and shit. So when you get a hard hit on the head or your your head gets knocked, your brain is bonking against the inside of your skull. I, it's one of the one of the problems yeah. that you have with whiplash and stuff like that. I haven't seen um, the uh, the new Top Gun movie, but I was watching oh. I was watching Gogglebox the other day, and they were watching it. And there's that bit. I I, I think it's the Top Gun movie when he's in the jet and he's like trying to push it to like, you know, mock whatever a million or something. And he gets yeah, up Mach a million. That's he, correct. He gets yeah. up to like the, 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 the threshold and everybody's like pleased that he's done it. And then, but he like keeps going, he keeps pushing it like to just to get some more juice out of it or whatever. Right. And uh, he's up there. He's in that plane, and he is like total recalling, you know, like he's like the fucking eyes are bulging out and he's like yeah. shaking and everything. Um, maybe, uh, maybe there's some info information in that movie about what we're talking about right oh, now. That'll be my know? primary source for yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, that that was actually a really good movie, the Top Gun movie, the new Top as Gun an action movie. movie. Yeah. yeah, they don't they don't make action movies that are nice and straightforward like that as often as they no, should. No, no, no. Just good solid action movie with a good solid action lead. Yeah, all the usual bollocks you see in an action movie, just solid. We watched a couple of uh, classics over the uh, over Christmas. We watched uh, Die Hard, which was really really good. I hadn't oh, seen it in years. Movie. Really good yeah. action movie. We watched that too. We love that. We film. watched both uh, Home Alone one and two in the. I in the one theater. didn't watch two. Oh, What's two like? Two's great. It's really funny. Like the uh, in the theater. Yeah, they 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 had them um, playing in the in the movie theater, like in the lead up to Christmas. They had a whole bunch back of old movies. Yeah, they had like Scarface, Die Hard, Home Alone. No, not back to back. Home Alone one, Home Alone two. Oh, loads of other ones. Those are the ones that we saw. But we didn't. I didn't see Scarface though. Did you take to. the little ones to see these movies? No, we took them to see Home Alone one and two. Um, not the baby because she's she's not ready <laughs> for movies yet. Um, yeah, and then we went to see Die Hard. Just me and me and my wife. My wife. Um, it, it was really good. Like he, a lot of these old, uh, a lot of these older movies, uh, like particularly ones that did really well in the box office in like the nineties and stuff. Uh, man, they're so good. Like they, they just, they just, they, 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 they nailed a lot of them, right? Like the, just like the format, the pace, like the, you get like yeah. just a really decent story into like that allocated time, and you, you don't feel like it was rushed or, right? You know, like I watched the uh, Groundhog Day the other day. Oh, that's a good uh, one too. I, great movie. Yeah. Um, where are the Groundhog Days? Where, where are these movies? Well, Where are these oh, there, is a, a there is a new one. A lot of these. No, well, no, no. I, I'm not saying I want another Groundhog Day. Who did right? Groundhog oh, Day? I'm actually. saying where are the movies that are obviously Groundhog Day mid was, to low uh, budget? Was Harold uh, Howard Ramis. Ramis? Yeah, yeah. And he did. Um, was it Caddyshack? No, not Caddyshack. Stripes. He did Stripes. Right. He did a and bunch of stuff. And he was Egon in uh, in Ghostbusters yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. as well. He died. Yeah, Sadly, he did. He, he died. did die. Yeah. But um, my my point is, where are these mid range, mid budget films? Where are they? They've disappeared. It's all or nothing. It's either well, an indie movie that costs nothing or some huge fucking $200 million production. They're all swinging for the fences. They all want that one and a half to $2 billion take. None of these executives and studios are like, let's just make a film that costs like $25 million. Yeah. It has good actors and a good script. It's an hour and 45 even, minutes long. Even less. You could solid. probably do a, like a movie like Groundhog Day for way less than $25 million, right? There's yeah, not, you there's, think so. Uh, Everything costs a lot these days, though. So I I'm saying Pose. But like once once you basically have like a, an area that the movie's set in and like a couple of set pieces, like you don't need there's not like mass like tons of effects and stuff. It, most no of your expense is just is just talent, right? Like you Well, just... I, I don't know, like guys, I actually I honestly kind of think that Netflix and Amazon Prime and these platforms have grabbed up these middle market movies and you see them all the time and some of them are actually okay yeah well, like, like i'm sure then, i don't think any of them have been good enough to really set that as a, as a as a you know like a, a reliable place to watch these things right like they they are kind of just okay for the most part like well the um the one i watched lately with the, the one with the hand what was that called talk to me. Handy. Talk, talk to me that was a cheap movie that was good um, that cost 4.5 million. Right, but that's, that's was... what I'm saying. That is 
very low budget. Talk to me. Right? That is very <laughs> low budget. Talk to me. I'm Tony saying tips. middle, in the middle. Well, okay. How about Palm Springs? That was from 2020. That was actually the Groundhog Day one I was thinking of um, with Palm Andy Samberg. Springs. Palm Springs. It, it, it cost $5 million and it made it was sold to Netflix. It was a good movie. Whatever. Right. So yeah. Hulu, the whatever. Netflix is too focused on series. That's the problem. They're, nobody's like, every time someone's like, oh, have you seen so-and-so? I'm like, let me look, check it out. It's like, oh, 27-part series. I don't want a fucking series. I heard that the Squid Game reality show is really bad. Apparently, they, they, there's it a is. few things wrong with it. Mrs. F said it's just kind of not great, and they kind of have, then they have all these other bits in between the games where they're all fucking talking about each other and all that shit, but apparently it's just, when they filmed it- It doesn't matter. Okay, oh. it doesn't matter that it's bad, okay. or shit, or when they filmed it, it was really freezing cold and blah, blah, blah. Right. Right. Who cares? Like it's made a million on made it's made loads on Netflix and that's it. They push it to the side. It's like it doesn't matter that Ricky Gervais's new fucking thing is bad. It's on the top. It's on the top chart, so it everyone bad? clicks it. Everyone watches it. It doesn't. Yeah, it's, it's not very good. Like, and you know, it's classic. It's not classic Ricky Gervais. It's modern. Do you think if Ricky he Gervais. found out you said that about one of his stand ups, he would roast you at a at an event? No, I don't think he care. <laughs> I don't know, like, there's, there's, all this stuff is, is, we know it's bad, right? And it doesn't matter that it's bad, because if it does well on Netflix, that, that's all that matters. Like, it's like everything on YouTube. If, if it's, as long as it goes viral and, and gets enough views on it, they'll make another one, or they'll do more of it. It's, it's always been this way. It doesn't matter how, well, all mobile games that are bad. Yeah. Of course they're getting remade, because everyone's playing them. Like, you know, they, they don't care about... There's no incentive for them to make good ones, certainly not on Netflix. It, it's, it, it's more clickbait. It's, they want incentive. There's incentive to make things that are, people talk about, like, oh, you know, like, the thing, like that classic thing that you, you say about Squid Game that I've heard a hundred times from a hundred different people is, oh, it was freezing cold where they did it in a warehouse and everyone had a horrible time. It's like, and that makes me want to watch it more. That's not actually a bad <laughs> thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, you want to watch it's, people it's... in a warehouse having a horrible time? I just go yes. to Hat Films warehouse. Yeah, you just watch a Hat Films video. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, uh, the, what's in the, it's interesting that happened this week was uh, Tom Scott, the famous YouTuber, has uh, he telegraphed him him retiring from YouTube a year ago? Yeah, and stopping his stopping making basically he's stopping making videos on his YouTube channel. He's not stopping making videos or content or podcasts or any of the stuff. He's kind of carry on. I think ninety nine percent of the stuff he does, and you'll see him everywhere. Hopefully, he'll get some deal on Netflix or something. Anyway, I, mean, I I don't know him personally, and but you feel uh, like I, you do as a casual viewer. Yeah, I kind of feel like he's probably a nice guy. Nice. Um, I've, I've watched all he's, his he's, videos uh, for ten well, he years. Makes, he's made a video a week for every the last 10 years, single he? week. I watch his video. Tom Scott. Every time it comes out, my YouTube knows me. It's right there. Bam, new Tom Scott, and I watch it. Yeah, and they're and short too. They're yeah, like three to eight, eight minutes eight or minutes something. Long. And it's like it, it's generally speaking, I'd say eighty to ninety percent of the time, the video is interesting. Yeah, it's not long enough that I'm bored. He doesn't it's do some, this long. It's form usually content. some sort of infrastructure project or something. I'm from here the... in Austria where they've got. This and there's like some metal box. It's the only one in the world, and it does. It goes up and down a bit, you know. And it, but but you watch it, and you think, oh, that's actually quite interesting. And then he has some guy. Yeah, we here at the giant Austrian box. We move it up and down a little bit. It goes to the left. It's quite unusual. It's like that every week. And then he explains <laughs> why. Or he's it's in exactly a, like yeah. that. Yes. And then he's in a town in Australia. I'm in the most remote town in Australia. It's like it is amazing the dedication that he's got. To travel in places and explaining things. Sometimes he makes mistakes. He does videos where he explains, "I got that wrong, and I'm sorry." But these things well, happen. You okay. Know, all that well, kind no, of but stuff. here we go. This is the. This is now. This is what I think. He obviously is a is an expert grandmaster of the game of YouTube. Right? right. He has spent ten years, and and even in his goodbye video, he talks about how he's been playing the game and how he he talks about his podcast where he mentioned Spiff actually on his podcast. Oh wow. But as, as someone who plays the game well and he wants to learn from him and he, t he has played, he is, he is someone, and this is cynical me, um, who, who is, who is really f become used. He's a bit of a nerd like us who makes these fun videos, but he uses YouTube so well, his thumbnail creation, that his content style, his snappiness, you know, he's learned from the best, Mr. Beast and everyone. And he's always tried to play the game first. Sometimes I think, like, like that is his thing, like him telegraphing his goodbye and his, the way the goodbye video is done and all these things. And this, oh, this apology thing. We've talked about this a bit before, but cynical me kind of 
feels like Tom Scott has, and I can't really talk having, I mean, you see our thumbnails on YouTube. We, <laughs> we, we try and hit clickbaity titles as well and things that are relevant and things that are going on and, and we do A-B you testing and we, we care because you got it, right? But he is someone who has played the game spectacularly for so long. And yes, it's good good for him to to retire. But I kind of feel like I kind of feel like is this just a ploy? Do you know what I mean? Is he going to launch his new thing tomorrow? Do you know what I mean? Is he is there something coming? Like how long is the optimum wait time on YouTube before everyone's seen that video of him saying goodbye and clicked on it, and then they see the next video of him launching his new thing in partnership with someone else? You know, I I, I guess I'm a bit cynical about the idea of him retiring because like, he's not retiring he's just stopping making a video a week on this channel yeah right? and i, mean, I think he, he's got other channels i know but, that he does uh, uh, stuff with other people i i can't stand it his other content to me i find a bunch of people are all trying to did you know one another oh well actually did you know you know it's like it's a bit is like that the name sitting of the, down with people the and channel. they just yeah they did just talk know? facts it's like here's an interesting fact it's just like a fact dump yeah it's like it's like <laughs> qi but is it like the little without even the minimal it's like charm the little that kid had. from Jerry Maguire? Yes, I suppose it is. It's like it's like a four person podcast where they're all just did you knowing each other? Yeah, and it's just a bit fucking. I find it tedious. I like the stuff where he was like, "Here's a here's an interesting thing." Bam! I'm I'm at the uh, bit in yeah, Iceland you, where the the well, world is apparently splitting in two. I'm there. Yeah, I like yeah. that. But, Do you know, uh, no, I mean that that's that's the best stuff. You know, that is the the finest three minutes of right. of content you know, that you're going to get. Three that other week. people going and and trying to one up each other with some interesting factoid. I don't. Fuck, well, fuck some off. people like that. I mean, I I don't hate. It. Boring I, people. I, uh, Boring people. I don't like know that. what this says about me, but I actually like watching videos where people don't talk a lot. Like, uh, <laughs> I don't want to really hear anyone talk that much. I agree. You know, That's why I like watching poker. They don't say shit. Yeah, I just want to, <laughs> like, sometimes I just want to watch somebody playing a game. And even, like, sped up sometimes as well. And not Dude, not you know talking. what you should just watch? Just put some techno on or something. The I'm videos good. of, like, some street guy. Some street guy in, like, Korea cooking egg oh, fried I've rice or Oh, I've watched those. Yeah, I watch don't those all the time. Don't say a word. He's mixing the eggs. I've been watching a lot of. Uh, I've been in watching a, a lot of uh, no no commentary farming videos recently. No, <laughs> not not uh, not like farming simulator videos, but you know, like people just doing like farm chores. So like they'll right. go feed the ducks, and then like it'll very, cut, very and they're peaceful. riding a bike and feeding cows, and like occasionally they're just like, oh hey Harry, like talking to like one of the cows or whatever. Right. But not like there's no commentary, nothing. It's just like very peaceful. They're outside, like doing a bit of gardening, doing chores, you know, whatever, building a like a trough or something like just shit like that. I, I like I, mm. I, I like watching stuff like that. I also like okay. I also went down a rabbit hole the other day where I was watching tons of videos of people that keep an excessive amount of guinea pigs, but they have like these incredible enclosures for them. And uh, like this guy, this guy turned up, he's like, hi, everybody. There's like a fucking million guinea pigs. And he had a full watermelon and a machete. And he just carefully sliced the watermelon, the full watermelon into four segments put them on the ground, and then the rest of the video was just guinea pigs eating watermelon. <laughs> and it was yeah, like yeah. half an hour long. <laughs> this video probably has millions it of does, views, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, because of course it does, because th this stuff is fed to all of us, because it's, 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 again, it's the, it's the, this is just the way it is. I like you know? that, It doesn't though. have to be high budget. That doesn't have to cost a million. It just has to it's work. for me, that's... Anyway, Tom Scott, um, rest in peace. He's not dead. I think that's the whole thing, though. It feels <laughs> no, like if people... No, we, it we does need feel to emphasize like he's like, not dead. It's like, it's like imagine you know imagine he made a video saying you know I am I have died do you know what I mean yeah. like or something because that's what it sort of feels like or, you know but actually of course people who, who retire on YouTube in great drama don't actually disappear at all well maybe they do and I maybe, well I just think I'm a bit cynical There's been a so I'm, I'm just, of, I'm just uh, people as much as I like him I'm just holding 20, it my, at arms length the, the, the latter part of 2023 like I think Stampy's retired now or he stopped playing minecraft or something my, my son was saying yes and um i think captain sparkles is also retired from from making minecraft videos there's there there is a theme of retirement um amongst it, like certainly the the la the latter part the legacy of youtubers 2023 there's been a lot of like it's it's like i'm retiring but it's not actually like i'm stopping it's just i'm not making these kind of videos anymore or something like that you know that seems to be the theme you know so captain sparkles normally gets f five 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 you know he normally gets 50k views on his on his content right but then he announced he's retiring 
He gets 2 million views on the video and then does a final Let's Play. <laughs> okay, so he's now doing a final Minecraft Let's Play, which is going to obviously have an unknown number of I've episodes. I've been doing this all wrong. Like, I should have made, I should have done like some hype retirement announcements and stuff. Usually I just, when I'm sick of something, I just stop. <laughs> like, I'll make yeah, an just, you should just do an announcement that you're stop. retiring from City Skylines 1. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I finally decided uh, I'm never going back to that one, guys. Uh, sorry. Anyway, you should definitely announce that you're retiring sips from the next fucking thing. I just thing. feel like um, a lot of this stuff just requires some effort, which I'm just not willing to put in, you know? Like, I, I know that doesn't sound very nice, but, like, I, I, I'll maintain. Uh, I am very lazy. And <laughs> I, I only started doing all this because I just wanted to play more games. I feel like now I'm in a spot where I am just playing games, and that's that's perfect. Like it, it, when I'm done with the one I'm playing now, I'm just going to play another one and I'll just keep going until uh, in, in, until I can't do it anymore. You know what I mean? The Steam did their um, Steam Awards, which were all just trolls. Did you see these? No. <laughs> no. So the winner of the Labor of Love Award was Red Dead Redemption 2, which has been abandoned for the best part of a year. Right. Okay. Um, the best game on Steam Deck was Hogwarts Legacy that barely runs on Steam Deck. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Um, stuff like this. So yeah, it was it, most innovative gameplay award. The designers of this game were at the front lines of creative experimentation. This game delighted, inspired, and entertained with newness, newness never played before, won by Starfield. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So Gosh. yeah, so, so basically... How can uh, Steam be flaming the games on this platform? Chill, bro. What the fuck? Well, that's the thing. Like, it's it, the, the, these guys are... The Rockstar are going to receive a trophy from Steam saying you've won the Labour of Love award <laughs> oh for God. Red Dead Redemption 2. Oh, that's fun for gonna... the fans, but geez. Yeah, that is, that is fun. So... That's that's the thing, and everyone's you know I'm try I'm I'm looking through a bunch of games that I want to play. Ready this or not year. is a lot of fun. The new version of that that's come out, it's really that's really good. Been playing. That's like a swap game. You go in ready or not. Oh, ready cool. or not. Yeah, you go in as like a four player swap. Did you team. play? Uh, it's very hard. Uh, chat were telling me the other day that you played some Lethal Company. Did you like it? Oh, I've yeah, played really, loads of Lethal really Company. Really love Lethal yeah. Company. Yeah, we played a bit for the main channel with mods as well. So I was going to play with out. Tom and Ravs the other night, but my internet was so fucked I couldn't. No, no. Um, yeah, it's it's it's, yeah. Been, it's been a lot of fun yeah um so I've yeah got, tons, there's tons a lot of games. games i want to play i want to play a lot of talk of i want to it's play more dose. actually frightening yeah i played the system shock remake dreadful really bad yeah. um it's just just not a good game it's just it's too much like a game that came out in the mid 90s it's like why well would i you think do some that? people want that some people yeah, want the remake would, you don't want to go backwards it's like saying well, but, cars were better when you had to crank them to start them. It's, it's no, no, don't. Well, I know, but I, 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 I feel where you're coming from, but some people want that tedious authenticity well, of how not. games were like back yeah, then. I did and not. Some people like that. Like, and maybe they, they weren't want, there, or they were there, and it's, it's like, like old school never RuneScape or WoW Classic. You know, some people want to experience what they experienced 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Yeah. Again. I, feel like, I feel like a lot of WoW Classic is just uh, nostalgia hijacking, honestly. Like, it's people who weren't there who what are then trying is, to trying to experience it for the for the first time which is fine i guess but I, like i think people that weren't there you can't claim nostalgia you're just playing an older game from before we learned things it's like saying it, to me it's the gaming equivalent equivalent of being an anti-vaxxer well listen though you say learn things the problem is is that what do you change to bring it up to date yeah. and then how far do you go like you know world of warcraft wow classic are adding the fucking wow token or some shit for you to be able to buy gold or i can't yeah, remember what they're there, adding, there they're adding some, some nonsense garbage little... to it and it's kind of like well why are you adding this but not the quality of life stuff that actually that's what i'm would... saying um I, I mean it's, it's literally going back in time to before we had solved these problems who who decides i guess because everyone's got their own preferences right and so it's sometimes easy just to do nothing and upset no one because then you can be like you know, uh, you, you're like, yes, uh, this, is a, this is at least an authentic remaking of what this game was for people who want that. Here's, or... what, you want. Here's what people remember about uh, positively about older games. The setting, the style, and, uh, you know, the, the sort of at the time, the uniqueness, the look and feel of the game, perhaps. What they do not fondly look back on is, oh, shit, the inventory management was shit, wasn't it? Honestly, I don't they're even... like, we'll keep that true to the original. Don't. don't a lot don't. of that stuff I, I remember, I think back on negatively, which puts me off wanting to play classic. But when I think of classic, um, classic WoW, not like the one that's out now, but like as it was when it came out, uh, I'm I'm remembering my initial sort of like uh, thoughts on just how, how the game was. 
the social aspect of it, but but more than anything, um, I'm remembering me at a time where I had far less responsibilities, far more time to sit around and play um, a game like that, you know, and um, and it, it's it, it's sad in, in a lot of ways because like you start playing, and you're like, yeah, I, I just can't really do this. You know, like I don't. Mm. I can't I, I, I can't be who, who I was with the amount of time I had and or, you know, even the amount of uh, interest I had at the time for it. You know what I mean? Like right. there was nothing else at the time that was really anything like it. So it was, you know, of course, everybody that was playing, it was having a great time because it, there just wasn't anything else really like you it. didn't have a wife and family and yeah. responsibilities yeah. and a flood situation yes and you didn't have like and you i know, know a lot of people are like well you fucking sit around and play games all day yeah i do i know but i don't <laughs> i don't sit around and play wow all day it's completely different like it you know what i mean like i used to be able to you used to use that as an escape I, from the hell the hellish world that you lived well, in you well, well, like working and stuff yeah like yeah. if you took a day off work sick yeah fuck i would sit around my undies and play wow all day of course i would if i take a day off work now i'm not sitting around in my undies playing wow all day Sit around in my undies playing farming simulator all day. Hell yeah. <laughs> Moving forward always. I, I used to play WoW a lot when I had a, a job I hated uh, or I didn't have a job. Yes. I would smoke some weed, put on some fucking Bob Dylan and play WoW. Yes. That's what I would do. Yes. But I don't want to do that again. No. Same as I enjoyed when I played Eve at the time. Loved it at the time. It was great fun, but I would never go back. I think all the, this danger of constantly going back like, people are going to say, oh, you played Dota for 11 years. <laughs> it's constantly changing. It's constantly evolving. It's not the same game. It really They're improving is not. Shit. No, they change it so, all the time. And it's also a competitive game. Like, CSGO at its root, CS, CS2 as it is now, CSGO, CS, all of it, is essentially the same game, but slowly evolving. And the core gameplay is so good and simple, and you're playing against other people. Yes. In System Shock, I'm playing against the same stupid AI that it was in the 90s, and they play the same fucking way. Yeah. That's the problem. There's been no evolution. Anyway, I've got to go. I've got to meet Mrs. F for lunch. Right. All right. Well, thanks, Prefix. Thanks. We're all, yeah, we're no, all th going into town. Thank you so much. Uh, it was good to good to be back. back. Happy New Year. And, um, yeah, Happy New Year. Hope you had a good Christmas. Stay or frosty. Holiday season. Yeah, enjoy yourselves, and uh, we're, we're back. We're back. Let's, we're let's back, get baby. another streak going. Let's, let's do the streak again. Let's go. Yeah. Another full year. Oh, man. All right. Until then, goodbye. Adieu. Bye. Bye. Bye.